In this video, I will explain what is time complexity of an algorithm. The first thing that comes to your mind when you hear about time complexity is how much time does your algorithm run? So, if it takes 10 seconds, it's 10 seconds. If it is 1 minute, it's 1 minute, and so on. At least, that's what I thought, but that is not the case. We don't measure the exact time because it depends on way too many factors like CPU, computer temperature, other open tasks on your PC, memory, and so on. It would run differently on different computers, so we can't measure that. That is why, in computer science, by the term time complexity, we look at how the algorithm performs based on the input size. Let's say that you need to print each element of an array of three integers. How much time would it take? Well, we have to do three operations. What if our array is bigger? Let's say 500 elements. Well, in that case, we have to do 500 operations. You see the pattern. The larger the input, the longer it takes. What if we wanted to put that on a graph? We can see that printing each element of an array follows linear complexity, because for n elements we have to do n tasks. But is that the only complexity? What if we just wanted to print out one element? Then we just have to do a single line of code like print array 10. We call this complexity a constant complexity because the size of an array doesn't matter, we only do one operation each time. What if we wanted to compare each element of an array with all elements of a different array? Let's say that we have this array. And let's say that we have this array. We take 1 and compare it to 5, 6, 7 and 8. We take 2 and compare it to 5, 6, 7 and 8. And so on. What complexity is this? As you can see, number of operations is 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. Or simply 4 times 4. Because for each element, 4 of them, we can do 4 operations. We call this quadratic complexity. There are other types of complexities, which we will cover later in the course, but for now remember these. At the end of the section I also included some practice problems where you have to determine complexities, so make sure to do those tasks. And I will do some examples as well. See you in the next video where I talk about space complexity.